On the 28th of October 2018, Jair Messias Bolsonaro was elected president of Brazil. In the night of his victory, I made this video in front of his house in Rio de Janeiro. Why did Brazilian people, after 13 years of a leftist government, of a works party, PT, decide to vote for a far-wing candidate? A man who defends torture, a former army captain that praises the generals who ran Brazil in the times of the Brazilian dictatorship. Two years before the election, Bolsonaro was nobody. Neither the political analysts nor the press could believe that Jair Bolsonaro, an impressive parliamentarian belonged to a tiny right-wing populist party, had even a chance to run the presidential election. It sounded so absurd. Bolsonaro seemed to be one of the strange candidates that appear from time to time in Brazilian elections. My own view of Bolsonaro changed one day in July 2016. I was having a lunch with an important government advisor. Suddenly, he pointed at two very important businessmen who had arrived at the restaurant. My source told me, look at those guys. They are helping Bolsonaro's presidential campaign. I remember that moment. I realized that Bolsonaro should be taken seriously. He had the power of money behind him. That was when I decided to write his profile to the magazine I work for, the POE. I started to work on the profile of Jair Bolsonaro in July 2016. During the following two months, I met him six times. I want to understand who was this man who wanted to be the president and was backed by some influential people in Brazil. When we were following Bolsonaro on the streets, a crowd approached him. I realized that he was becoming really popular. And then I started thinking, what is happening in the Brazilian society? Our first meeting took place in Bolsonaro's office inside the Congress building. It was mid-July 2016. Before I could sit down, Bolsonaro asked me if I liked the pictures on the wall of his office. They were framed photos of the generals who occupied the presidents during the military dictatorship in Brazil from 60s to 80s. It was the first time that I've heard a parliamentarian defend so openly the Brazilian dictatorship. A dark time in Brazil where people were tortured, killed, and democracy as, uh, was suppressed. After spending many days with Bolsonaro and interviewing various sources, I started to realize what were the main reasons why so many Brazilians supported him? The first reason was order. Bolsonaro talks of order, defense, and authority. This message appealed to many people who feel that Brazil has become more insecure. In 2016, nearly 60,000 people were murdered in Brazil. Brazilian people were terrified of the increase of violence, in violence. How would Bolsonaro tackle, tackle this issue of growing violence? It's hard to tell. Bolsonaro has no real policy for the security. His only proposal is to arm the population. More headguns. In one of our interviews, I asked him what does he think of the accusations that he is inciting violence? Bolsonaro answered, every decent citizen should have a weapon to defend himself. When I walked down with him, 
Bolsonaro was interrupted many times with requests for photos and videos. He pointed fingers as if he were holding a gun. It has become his signature gesture, and for my surprise, he posed that way from a magazine photo. The second reason for Bolsonaro's election was the economic crisis. During the Dilma Rousseff's government, the inflation in Brazil got out of control. Brazil faced the worst economic recession in its history. 13 million people were unemployed. In one of my interviews with Jair Bolsonaro in the July of 2016, I asked him how he intended to deal with the economic crisis. Bolsonaro Bristol, you are trying to push me up against the wall. I wasn't. I was just asking the obvious questions for a presidential candidate, but he had no answer. After Bolsonaro was elected, he has adopted a liberal economic policy, which includes cutting public spending and cutting social investments. Despite these cuts, unemployment remains high in Brazil, and Brazilian economy has had a significant growth. The third reason for Bolsonaro's success was the return of the traditional values. Many Bolsonaro supporters are Brazilians who feel estranged with the liberal values. Many of them are evangelicals representing a conservative form of Christianity. These supporters want to see the restoration values of family and religion. In the beginning of his presidential campaign, he gave a speech in which he stated, Brazil above everything. But soon, he identified the strengths of evangelical voters and added, God above all. Bolsonaro has also benefited from the anger of the Brazilian people with the growth of corruption. Many politicians, mainly from the, from the Works Party, have been involved in a massive corruption scandal. Bolsonaro has taken advantage of people's anger. He has captured pe people's feelings of indignation. It has to be added that many politicians who supported him have also been deeply involved in corruption. When I talked to him about it, he was pragmatic. If I can only work with the pure ones, I won't get anywhere. It's like looking for a virgin in red light zone. In the end of the 2016, I wrote a long profile of Jair Bolsonaro to my magazine POE. What has happened after that? It has become clear that Bolsonaro wants to attack all institutions, the Congress, the judiciary, academic institutions, arts, culture, minorities, and independent media. This attitude was established in our second interview in the morning after our first conversation. Before the interview began, a Bolsonaro secretary approached me and put a camera in front of me. Bolsonaro told me that the interview would be filmed. That's how I will do now. So there is no risk of you all twisting my words, Bolsonaro warned me. I have interviewed a many businessmen and politicians, but this was the first and the only time during my whole career that I was being filmed by my interview. Bolsonaro uses social media to attack the press. He accused the moronic press of misinterpreting his words and being dishonest. What does Bolsonaro's election then tell us about the changes in Brazilian society? When I was writing Bolsonaro's profile in 2016, I realized that he is a disruptive politician. Bolsonaro used hate speech to attack his political opponents in a way that has never been seen in Brazil. Bolsonaro told me that he would not negotiate with the leftist parties. I hope 
they are swept off the map. Although Bolsonaro can do everything he says, his hate speech has stimulated part of the society to adopt the same violent language. As a result, Brazilian society is now more aggressive and intolerant. This change actually began before Bolsonaro. The Brazilian society has become polarized since the 2014 elections. But in the time of Bolsonaro, the tone became even stronger. Some Bolsonaro's closest allies usually defend the Brazilians' former dictators and their authoritarian acts. It's no wonder that some analysts consider Bolsonaro to be a threat to democracy. But is Bolsonaro really a threat? I believe that the majority of Brazilian people do not want a democratic setback. This year, we have seen many students protest against the Bolsonaro government in many Brazilian cities. The parliament has contained almost of Bolsonaro's proposals that violate the constitution, as for instance, to use the army to contain demonstrations. The media, acts freely and bravely, despite attacks against journalists in social media. Brazilian society, parliament, the justice system, and the press have been reacting to Bolsonaro attacks on democracy. Brazilian institutions have proven to be much stronger than any vulnerable.